Hey guys and welcome back to Juno New Origins. My name is Twitchy and we are playing this fully autonomous playthrough here. This game has a programming interface for an autopilot and we are doing nothing but using that through this entire playthrough. Today's contracts are first off to get to orbit, put a CubeSat up there and of course make a speed record while we're at it. And coming up later on in the episode we will be making a fully autonomous car. In the background, the staging up is currently punching its way through about 34 kilometers of atmosphere right now. It's a currently being propelled by 7.7 .7 tons of solid fuel and 25 of rocket motors underneath that to make sure that we can get ourselves at least on a decent trajectory up out of the atmosphere. On the right hand side you can see the flight log and this is showing us all of the different levels and such forth that the AI are currently taking note of. At the moment all we're trying to do is make sure that our fuel levels are above zero. If they are below zero we go ahead and do a stage or if in fact at zero no point do we end up with negative fuel though that would be a quite interesting. Second stage of my motor here uh, it's a lot of liquid fuel I forget the exact number here but more importantly we've got two engines on the bottom to give us the necessary thrust. The staging up used to have just a singular engine on this stage but with the added weight of the CubeSat launcher and uh, everything else we needed to make sure that we actually got up to real orbit rather than coming that back down afterwards we ended up needing a second engine on there to provide the necessary thrust the ai currently tracking the vertical velocity just to see how close to apoapsis we are and once we get close enough we start our circularization burn trying to bring our periapsis up high enough to meet the requirements for the satellite mission on the top left hand side of our screen as we make our way up to orbit we need to get ourselves about three and a half kilometers per second of sideways velocity thankfully this will also meet the light speed contract uh, criteria that we need to do as well giving us a nice cool 400k 320k sorry in the bank the satellite mission is going to earn us a million credits and that is definitely uh, something that we are looking for here we we have got crested up and over the top of our apoapsis at this point if you look at our altitude in the bottom of our screen you can see that it's starting to go down uh, again but that's fine we are so close to having our periapsis circularized that i don't really mind uh, about that all we need to do is get our periapsis above the atmosphere above 80 kilometers uh, when that happens in fact as that happens right now the cubesat launcher at the front did fire off unfortunately it happened so quickly that even i playing the game didn't notice it let alone now now that we are playing through the mission at twice the speed but right we have achieved all that we needed to achieve for this mission that's fine that's excellent but we do have this hunk of hardware up in space and i'm wondering whether we can bring it back this mission of course has been tracked and presided over by our flight program as you can see it has become a literal beast of a program at this point built over the course of the past five episodes the only thing that really needed to change to make sure that this mission could go off without a hitch was an extra staging to be placed in where we wanted the cubesat to be launched as part of its final program, uh, after it has achieved any mission objectives or made it to orbit, we make our way around to where we think we're going to be on the other side of the planet from the from the launch pad that we took off from. Turn around, slow ourselves down, enter the atmosphere, and do our best to survive re-entry. Unfortunately, we did not have enough fuel on this craft to be able to slow it down enough, but it's okay. We met all the mission objectives. I'm willing to burn up some spacecraft in the atmosphere. Okay, with our orbital prowess now proven, I think it's time to come back and talk to Buck Marshall. He's got a taxi driver mission for us. There are four spots I want you to visit and go from any of them into any order. Okay, once you're done, come to the town hall. So that's five, right? Four waypoints plus the plus the town hall. We're going to accept that. Uh, we're not going to do any of the others because most of the others can be done as part of other missions. Go mark faster than Mach uh, 0.1. Go faster than three kilometers per second. Th these will get done next time we go to orbit. I almost guarantee it. Okay, I'm coming back to the medium jump here, and I'm just just gonna remove the wings. I, know, I never know how it remembers the stage, uh, the, not the staging, sorry, the uh, the symmetry. Notice how I pulled the wings off, and I had to take them off individually, but the the, the wing tips, I just took off one, and it took both away. I, d I don't know what I did to do that. <laughs> the mirror tool over here, I mean, there's there's like three different ways of mirroring everything out. It, it it's kind of confusing. Anyway, uh, so so this is going to be relatively simple. This is. This is not what I was expected to find here, but I know why it's here. <laughs> okay, I think for our first mission, we're going to do literally the simplest thing I can think of. We're going to point at the target, and we're going to turn our pit... Uh, no, not pitch, wait. No. <laughs> and we're going to turn our throttle onto full. I don't know how pitch got that. Okay, let, let's save that. Uh, it... it I was thinking that actually we could... I've got the wrong launch site, haven't I? I, I was thinking that we could... 
uh, locate the target, speed up, slow down, register that we've hit the target, go to another target, and such forth like that. But actually, honestly, I just want to see what happens here. Uh, we should be locked look, to the target. Are we going to the target? I don't think this knows where the target is. Mm, there, there is a problem here. and I think it might be the fact that the wheels don't know how to turn. Yeah, that, that might be it. I mean, we're definitely locked onto the right place. <laughs> So the turning angle here is two degrees. Two degrees is, I mean, it's it's quite a lot, really, but it's also next to nothing. So uh, let's let's try ooh, twenty. That costs me a lot of money, but uh, you know, if it gets the job done, I'm willing to uh, to accept this as a risk. Uh, and turning angle on the back wheels. I don't think we want turning angles on the back wheels. This is where we put our brakes, right? <laughs> Round two. Can you turn? No. I mean, do I, am I even seeing a turn here? Maybe there's just not enough clearance between wheel and body. Okay, I'm going to wait until we take off and see if the wheels turn at that point. No, okay, there, there is definitely a turning issue here. Again, the simplest thing I could think of, because we're keeping things simple here, is just to move the, the wheels away from the body. But no, it's still not... Is there, am I misunderstanding what turning angle means? I mean, surely the fact that it should be able to... Can, can I... I can, I can manually turn it. Mmm. Why is it not turning itself? Okay, we're going to start just blindly groping around inside the properties here. I found this turn input is on the yaw, which I would expect it to be. But maybe we need to activate the group first. And I'm, I'm going to go as far as doing this manually quickly. We're going to jump in. I'm going to press 1, and then we're going to see what happens. Press 1. Did anything happen? Okay, I've pulled up the, the action group here. Um visuals and you can see even doing this is it's not affecting it though again a and d all over it okay i've been playing around with this manually we're going to just like override everything it's trying to do uh in the flight log here uh so we we first before we do anything have to turn the activation group on if we don't turn the activation group on nothing happens then you'll notice in the bottom left of my screen i've got a yaw control the yaw control will turn the wheel but it doesn't want to stay there i think that might be let's 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 turn off this lock let's see if it yeah it's this to do with that okay that's fine so what i need to do is have a little program out there that tells the difference between our current head the the yep the white one and the yellow one tells us what this angle difference is and then turns us until the angle difference is zero right it's it's the simple as that as they say right no you you knew it was going to be no before i'd even finished that sentence of course it's not as simple as that look at these numbers here so i've got a var variety of stuff and I, I just want to do this to illustrate the limitations that i'm working with here uh, so obviously there isn't just a vector to target it doesn't seem to want to work like that so i had to go on a wild chase across the entire internet big shout out to mr reed too uh on steam have a great guide uh, about vectors and PIDs and in there I managed to get a whole bunch of stuff about the coordinate systems that are being used including one that is centered on the craft which is nice and I've managed to get a uh, a nice piece of code from from way on the discord that told me how to get like my forward vector and this here is my forward vector in the ship space it should be constant you know I've got an XYZ relative around the vessel and I want to know which way forward is relative to that this this one here here should just be one but look at this mess that's going on everywhere i managed to get the location for for myself in the planet centered inertial frame i, I think that's what pci stands for uh, it, it it's just an xyz centered on the center of the planet with i think it's the y going with the pole and then x and z are just randomly chosen as far as i can tell that i thought my position in local space in the same uh, space that we were just talking about here would, would, would also center on my craft but it turns out I don't understand local space uh, and somehow I'm a hundred points off of off of these, a couple of thousand points there on that last one we need to figure out how to format this nicer so that we can read a little bit better but anyway however it works out if I take the target's position in local space and minus my position in local space we get this nice little vector here which doesn't look all that nice but what, what I want to show you is if I turn manually 
to look along the target here. You can see how that center number gets really close to one, meaning that it's on the line along my craft. I think we could use that. I think I think that's a great thing that we can um, take advantage of. Obviously, if we're not perfectly level, oh, also this craft has a, a little bit of a bit of a problem where it, it kind of gets stuck occasionally. I mean, I do I do have a way out of these situations, but it's normally quite terminal. Uh, so. Hmm. So this is the block that does all of the work. We count down from five to one uh, and say active. And then we turn group one on just because we know that's what we need to start the ore. And then the debugging start. That That's where the line of confidence ends. This, this is where I know exactly what we're doing in the program. And now we've thrown in a whole bunch of stuff that just gives me numbers so that I can try and figure out what it is we're doing. If you feel overwhelmed by this, to believe I also feel overwhelmed by this. There's there's a whole bunch of stuff here, but you can see like we've got the the navigation position here, and then just like a whole bunch of stuff that makes it readable on the screen. So I've got my positions, these two, the target positions, these two in uh, local and planet coordinates. Uh, I then minus one from the other, and it turns out the most useful one is in the local space. Doing it native just doesn't give me the right uh, the right answer there. Uh, and then uh, I, I had to take two to the Discord to find out stuff. And as I say, way two seven seven four really helped me out. Uh, I've got an angle in between, but I'm not actually going to be be using now that I figured out a, a whole bunch of other stuff here. But that was very very helpful. Also gave me uh, this Funk FD craft forward vector which i believe is the way i'm facing in in local space i don't think it's rads but i, I might have to to double check that it's normalized xyz so it points off in a direction and returns you something that adds up to one as i'm sure you can imagine the path here to finding this that will actually give us the right direction sorry no this one up here oh it's so confusing it's that that th this one is the important one uh that gives us the right direction I, I now need to go away and make some sort of steering system on this, so wish me luck with that. Again, it won't be a straight linear path, and we'll just jump back at the end because, the, I mean, just doing this got messy. I lied, the jump will just be too great, so I'm going to bring us in every now and then when I've done something pretty substantial to the code. Uh, the first one I'm doing is I'm just going to start a, a little telemetry loop up in the corner here, uh, and this is going to start getting pretty messy, so I think I'm going to implement a few variables over here. So variables are a little system that are available in Visi, uh, in, in most programming languages, uh, to be fair, but you need to create a variable uh, first, so uh, I'm going to go with, let's go with target direction that's a good one what, what i've also got here uh we'll go uh forward and i've also created a target dot product now what are we going to do with, with these well we're going to use this that little um block here we're going to set the variable let's grab all of this block here so this is the uh, the vector towards the target in local space i'm going to set that uh Wait, let, let me let me think about this. We're gonna grab that piece of information. We're gonna set the target direction variable in there. So that the, the target direction is now just a thing that I can access at any point. It's in my variables list. I just pull it out and I place it down. And indeed, I'm gonna put that into the uh, the flight log here. So essentially, nothing has changed. All I've done is created a variable, set it to a to a to a, to a number, and printed that number out instead of printing the number directly but this means this is now available for me to use in my flight log and i'm going to go ahead and do the same uh, you know i'm not going to copy it out like that i'm going to go ahead and do the same for all the others and this now means every time i want to use these numbers i i don't need to grab this entire like look how long this is uh, i don't need to grab all of that we we can just grab that in fact i don't even need this to be this long anymore let, let let's let's do a little bit of a refactor here Already, this ridiculously long block is now just three three parts long. Beautiful. Love it. Let's get rid of that. Uh, and I'm going to use that to do the thing that I discussed right at the beginning, where I'm going to uh, take take the, the, the two directions, figure out the angle in between them, and then I'm going to do something to try and figure out which way to turn. I don't know what that is yet. Let's try and figure it out. And whilst I take the craft out to do a little bit of manual debugging, I would like to take this opportunity to thank the sponsors of this flight. That's right, my patrons.
Scroll up the screen right now, you will see a list of names. List of names of the guys and girls that have gone along to patreon.com forward slash twitchy and made a monthly donation in appreciation for all the scientific work that we do here. Very, very high level rigorous science gets done on this channel and that's not cheap. So from the very bottom of my heart, I would like to thank all of these individuals right here. And thank you. Thank you so much. So whilst all that data is being collected and set, I'm also going to have a driving loop on the go. This is kind of like the main uh, navigation system that we've got here. If the target dot product is less than uh, whatever I think is close enough to be looking directly towards it. I've gone with four nines, whether that's going to be close enough or not, whether it's too exact, I don't know. We'll, we'll figure that out. But that's looking close enough that it's nearly one. Uh, if it's not that, then we have a look at the Y component of the target direction. And if that's if that's positive, we turn in a positive direction. If it's negative, we turn in a negative direction. I literally just got that from driving around and having a look. All right, let, let, let's see what this does. I can already think of a few uh, failure scenarios at the top of my head. Mostly what happens if we're facing entirely the wrong way, if we're, if we're facing backwards. that That's not going to work. We've got some heading check fails already. That That's beautiful. I did not... I didn't set the throttle to anything. We're, we're, not, we're not going anywhere. There's no throttle. <laughs> Okay, after steering, if we're more than a hundred away, picked randomly, uh, then we turn our throttle on. If not, turn the throttle off. Yes, easy. Easy, question mark. Let's have a look. Three, two, one, we're away. Throttle is up. We are turning in the right direction. Okay, this is good. This is very, very good. Uh, I literally no idea what's going Oh, oh, oh no. We, we continue to turn and we, oh, what's, why is he looking that way? Mm, something's wrong. Something is wrong. <laughs> I'm tempted to not show you all the debugging as I realise that actually I wanted the X component, not the Y component. The Y component's the middle component. I don't want that. I don't want that. What I want, I want the X component. The Y component is if if it's looking, if it's if it's bigger than one, then we're looking in the right direction. Um, okay, let let let's see this again. Hopefully this time it's a little bit better. When we line up now, the dot product should just stop it. But yes. Okay, we're definitely going to have to implement some sort of PID controller, just something to stop us snaking around. But you know what? At the moment, I am taking this. Every time it says heading check fail, we actually hit uh, a zero whilst it is being looked at. I didn't think we'd ever hit a zero on the X component here, but it looks like every now and then it is close enough to do so. This, this is... Um Pretty horrific. I, I'm not. I'm not sure that I am proud of what we got. Oh, it's because we're so close. Our distance is so little now. Okay, so I pro it, it's actually in meters. So maybe less than ten meters would have been the time to turn the throttle off. Yeah, I'm not sure whether we're even gonna make it at this rate. Uh, 10 meters would definitely, that that we would literally just pass 10 meters. That would have been ideal. But there we go, for the first time ever, we've managed to do that completely autonomously. Um, we're now about to drive into a wall and I don't know what to do about that, but that that's, that's kind of cool. Wait, 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 wait. Why are we not going anywhere now? Because we're closer than 70 meters. Oh, yeah, we definitely need to turn down that distance check. Okay. 20 hours of my life. Three whole days later, we have ourselves a working program here. You can see that it works through the countdown. We start some telemetry, and then we start a distance check. Whilst we are uh, further than a certain distance away, we do this purple thing. The purple thing you can think of like a function is making sure that we're pointing in the right direction, and if we're not, points us in the right direction. Also, a little bit of speed control there. Having grabbed our checkpoint, we now get taken over by a second purple block. This is going to try and get us down a big hill. I thought we might have to go down a ramp, but no. When we... Uh, detect that we've gone uphill we turn blindly to the left and then start heading in a 300 degree heading if we're to the right of the 300 degree we turn left with the way to the left we turn right and there's a little bit of speed control as per always once we make it to a certain point i turn into the, the the village hoping that we can make it smoothly through now there was many ways of us actually coming into this village sometimes we came in off, off the right building sometimes we came in off the left that's why i would hit that building rather than going into this little corner that we could also get stuck in there uh, now we're just going straight back on to a target seeking scenario and once we've got the checkpoint we're going to just roll ourselves backwards because we have no reverse in this craft not a big problem uh, looking out though you can see the distance we have to cover we've literally only made it one set of buildings down and we've got to go all the way through town and we're going to achieve this by taking off to another purple block this is called top to slope it's going to go through the village first by pointing north we're going to be using the dot product 
product. The dot product is uh, it takes the the direction that I'm looking, compares it to the direction I want to be going. If they uh, are on top of each other, we get uh, an answer of one. If we are completely pointed away, well, not if we're co completely pointed orthogonal, like right angles, we get a zero. If we're completely pointed away, we get a minus one. Uh, once again, we're just kind of bouncing off a few buildings to make sure we are where we expect ourselves to be. And then I turn right. Now, there was no way actually for me to get through this little gap here without bouncing off some buildings, but it just so happened that bouncing off that first building and now this last building here lined us up perfectly what is for what is probably the most difficult part of this mission, that is going down the slopes. I was just driving towards a certain heading and hoping that that would be fine. That did work out quite well, but by the time we got down to the bottom slope, the turn on the flat would lead to a whole bunch of inconsistencies. So I ended up sliding down the wall on the what was the ship's right-hand side, our left-hand side on the screen, so that I came for a consistent turn down the bottom here. You can see that we've got a whole bunch of more buildings to try and navigate through when we get down to the bottom of this particular slope. Again, we could have been using a slightly more nuanced version of the siding our heading instead of snaking back and forth, but this is working quite well. The good thing about the dot product is it gives you a number that you can almost directly feed straight into your heading, uh, your your control in fact being from zero to one whereas trying to follow headings i've got to compare where i am to where I'm going and, and hope that that's working out fine. So we now enter the, the warren of the back alleys, the streets here. I've got to try and make a full su uh, spiral turn here to try and make my way all the way around. Bouncing off walls to once again make sure I know where I am. I wish I had turned a little bit earlier for this particular manoeuvre, but the craft is just driving its way into the wall with a full left hand lock on and eventually after a little bit of time it does indeed make its way along the edge of the wall. We follow a set of uh, heading navigation waypoints and then eventually just move into the target seeking mode. We do get stuck up on a wall, but with the next series of maneuvers, we actually manage to get the the, the node anyway. So I, I allow that to happen without it going exactly to plan, but it's close enough. We then try and wiggle our way back and forth. And this, this command is pretty simple. If I'm not looking outwards, turn right, go forwards, turn left, go backwards. It, it's as simple was that of course go backwards involves just turning my throttle off and waiting for gravity to drag me downhill thankfully this entire drive has been downhill we make it through a gap and then we try and judge our distance to the final marker over there use that to tell me when to make this rather sharp right hand turn through this little um, set of alleyways here not the best camera angles to show you that there were two ways of making it through the buildings but th both of those had bollards whereas this one did not so we go up and over the hill unfortunately we didn't quite make it as far up and over as i would have liked we just ran out a little bit of power but using the target seeking priority the target seeking function that we have the craft manages to after a little bit of a roll down the hill stop its forward stop its backwards motion sorry and move forwards towards the the final checkpoint and indeed the juno shrine does call to us we make it our way over here literally as i said three maybe four days of coding i would really have loved to do some sort of like object avoidance but the ray casting wouldn't detect the buildings it turns out the buildings are not real look at this in entire distance that we that we came here it was ridiculous indeed the size of the program that we were using to make this happen uh, was was huge absolutely huge so if you could give us a thumbs up for achieving this i'd be very much appreciative uh, another thing we're gonna do is just uh we're gonna we're gonna fire off our rocket engine on the back here just just to celebrate our little travel we made it all the way through uh i if i'd been smart i would have put it on the end of the program but I thought we had to go to another point after this one. Didn't the contract say something about going to the four different waypoints and then returning back home? I'm, I'm sure we said something about that at the beginning. Anyway, with that, I would like to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you guys next time, where it looks like we're going to be taking a camera to the top of a hill somewhere. Should be simple, but these things never actually really are, are they? But I'll see you then when we're going to do that. Bye!